To give you a bit of a backstory, I am my husband's second wife. He has two kids, older teens, from his previous marriage who live with us permanently. They only see their biological mother for one or two months during the summer when they're out of school. We've been married for 10 years and the kids have been with us the whole time. During our marriage, she missed more birthdays than she remembered. The same goes for Christmas and other holidays. No gifts, no calls, no cards. In the past couple of years of our marriage, she suddenly decided that she wants to be more involved in their lives. I'm talking about randomly showing up to our house to pick them up with no word to us beforehand. I've been reminded more than once by my in-laws that the kids have a mother, which is hurtful but true. I shouldn't make such a big deal when she comes around. I don't want to make a fuss, but we have asked her to let us know in advance so we can arrange something. She has never shown us the courtesy of calling and has been upset more than once because we'd already made plans. She has other children who have disabilities, and from what the children have told us, she makes them watch them when they're there. Her house has her rules, I suppose, but I feel like she's using them for free childcare, not to mention the children are cold towards us when they return home. Now to the issue at hand. Recently, my siblings had their 23 and Me done, and we found we had some pretty cool ancestors. Once I found out the news, I mentioned to my in-laws that it would be fun to do it as a family, meaning my husband and all the kids, and see what all our genetic makeup looks like. I was immediately shot down. I believe the exact words were, I wouldn't do that if I were you, this situation might end badly. So now here I sit, wondering what was meant by that. Since then, I've been wondering if mother-in-law was referring to the kids from the previous relationship, because there's absolutely no doubt about the others we've had together. I asked him what he thinks, and he seems reluctant to do so as there have been whispers about their parentage in the past. So, I'm wondering, am I the idiot for trying to encourage my husband to get a paternity test? That's irrelevant since he doesn't want to stop being their dad. Your problem has a simple solution. When the ex-wife comes over to pick up the teenagers for free labour, just say no. If she wants custody, she can go to court and ask for a schedule she must stick to, which she likely won't get because, at their age, courts likely won't make them stay with her against their will. Opie told the in-laws it could have nothing to do with the kids. It could be the husband with questionable parentage. It could be the mother-in-law who cheated. It could also be that the kids aren't his exes. There's a lot of room for drama without the kids being not his. This is how my mom found out her dad wasn't her real dad. My poppy, mom's dad, was not actually my oldest aunt and mother's father. Now, it makes a lot of sense why the youngest aunt stole the inheritance when Poppy passed. She knew when we did not. Poppy apparently thought we would be ashamed to know he wasn't dad or grandpa. I honestly wept when I heard that. Not once would I ever have thought of my Poppy as anything but the man I want to be when I fully grow up. Exactly, dad may not be the husband's dad. Opie's husband could be the mailman's son. Or his dad has more kids floating around the countryside. The 60s to 90s were wild. Leave it alone until the youngest of your bonus kids is 18. There are obviously concerns somewhere in the family tree. Your in-laws have a can of worms that they don't want to be uncovered. The children might be a cover story for their reasons. Let the kids have stability, at least until they don't legally need a parent to live with. If you continue, you will be the idiot. Take the no and leave it alone for several years. My now ex-boyfriend proposed four days ago. Let's call him Tim. Tim and I have been together for two years. We talked about marriage, we're both 26 and kids, etc. Until last week, I thought I had the perfect love life. Now, Tim has his best friend, Mimi, fake name. Tim also has a friend group he's very close to. The problem throughout our relationship was that Tim would place me last whenever his friends were involved. He missed a promotion dinner for my work because Mimi's dog was throwing up. He missed Diwali celebrations with my family because his friends wanted him to help paint their new house. Plus, some issues during his teenage years involving his friends resulted in his dad's threatening to take away his inheritance and distribute it to relatives. For context, his dad introduced us until last year before I left the company, which I joined straight after college, his dad was my boss. I still see him as a father figure and respect him a lot. I've told Tim that I don't like public proposals. I'm very introverted and having eyes on me during a loving moment will only cause me anxiety. Tim said he understood and promised he wouldn't do one when he proposed. Another thing I told Tim was that Mimi treats me passive-aggressively because I'm kind of an anxious person. I have mild OCD and I asked him not to involve her in our affairs. Tim said Mimi only wants the best for us. I didn't press the issue after he got defensive. 
Thursday, after I entered my flat, I was greeted by all of Tim's friends with Tim in a suit and a ring in hand. I kid you not, my flat was swarmed. There were people I didn't even know. Before Tim even said anything, Mimi chimed in and said, Chill, OP. Dear God, this is not the time to make that face. I saw red. I was having a severe anxiety attack as I don't do well with lots of people. I calmly told them there would be no proposal and to get out of my flat. They looked like in shock, so I just left my flat with just my purse, called my best friend on the way and told her to get them out, and just called a car service and sat in the car crying for two hours and went to my cabin I brought. I texted my parents so they wouldn't worry. I told them not to take Tim's calls, switched off my phone and stayed there. Luckily, I had enough cash to make a grocery run and the cabin was used last month. I only switched my phone on when calling a car and saw the barrage of calls and texts. I called Tim in the car and he sounded defeated and kept on apologizing and crying. I told him it was over. Turns out my best friend told his dad, who was so mad he told him that he would only get half his inheritance. I now feel that I reacted very badly and could have handled it with grace. I might have let my anxiety take over and overreacted and I cost him his money. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. The public proposal itself is the very least of your worries here, I'd say. It's not really about that, but about the fact that he completely disregarded your wishes and boundaries. He was disrespectful, inconsiderate, and very selfish. One good thing is that you found out and made the decision now, rather than after you were married. He humiliated himself, and any further consequence he might face is 100% on him. You were loud and clear about your wishes and boundaries. Thank him for sparing you the trouble of going through a divorce and then go and live your best life, on your terms, however you feel most comfortable. Also, were your friends there? You had to call your parents and your best friend, so this dipwad plans a public proposal against your direct instruction and only includes his own friends, to the point of inviting people you don't know. He doesn't care about you. He cares about his own optics. Don't go back to him, OP, please. This won't change. Bullet dodged. His father came in on your side, but I don't like the way he uses the thread of disinheritance to keep his son in line. If you married into that family, you would be on the pointy end of that behavior. It seems all well and good when his father does it and takes your side, but his father wouldn't always be on your side. Walking away was the right move. I'm fully prepared to be called the idiot. My dad has this habit of offering to get you something and bringing back something else or a different version of the same thing. He won't call and ask you what else you want if the item isn't there. He'll just assume you'll be fine with whatever he gets. A few weeks ago, we went out shopping for groceries as my mom was away. She had put her favorite dip on the shopping list and wrote down exactly what brand it was. Dad couldn't seem to find the dip, so he decided to grab a random green dip and hope for the best. When I pointed out that the dip mum wanted was on the shelf above, he grabbed it and seemed shocked that he didn't see it. Things like this are a regular occurrence and we expect to get something different whenever he offers to get us something. He never reads the containers or bottles and just grabs stuff at random most of the time. Last night, Dad called me and asked if I wanted anything from the liquor store. As he was grabbing some wine, I said, Can you please get me brand in raspberry, please? He brought home the pineapple flavor and only realized it was wrong when I pointed it out. Oh, and he also got annoyed when I didn't want to drink it as I dislike pineapple. He tells me it's the thought that counts, even if he messed up. That's when I told him that it isn't the thought that counts when you repeatedly get the wrong thing. This started a mini argument where I had to explain to him that he needs to take the time, make sure he gets the right thing, and call us if he can't. I seemed to have hurt his feelings, and he told me I was being ungrateful and rude. Not the idiot. Your dad is lazy and wants to pretend he's doing his bit when it comes to family shopping, but he's not doing it. How did he get away with this for so long? It's like he's totally incapable of using his eyeballs. Are you sure the man can read? Vision problems? Is he having cognitive or memory issues like dementia or something? Stop taking him up on any offer. Him. Hi, at the supermarket, do you need anything? You. No, I'm good. And then hang up. It's only the thought that counts if he's actually thinking. It's weaponized incompetence. The only way to fight that is for mom to start grabbing all the wrong items, handing them back to him with the receipt and saying, go back to the store, return these and get the correct items. The only way to fight weaponized incompetence is to force them to redo it correctly until, eventually, they realize it's easier to simply do things right the first time. My husband and I had been together for seven years. 
I have a young teen son with my ex and an infant with my husband. Since I gave birth, my husband has been weird. He's super hands-on and attentive, loves our daughter more than anything, and has been super helpful overall, but he's changed. His patience with my older son is completely gone. He's quick to snap and say that we don't respect him. He often says, I worked all damn day when it comes to damn near everything. He's been incredibly stressed out about finances. He often vents and tells me he feels like he's failing and isn't providing enough. So I know there's a deep-rooted issue and that therapy would probably be a good thing, but he always says, I don't have time for therapy, I'm always working. Even though he works 5am to 3pm with the rest of the day off and every Thursday and Friday he has days off. I work from home with a flexible schedule, but the same overall hours as him. Anyway, not even three months ago, I literally told him that if he didn't change, I couldn't stay. He was acting bipolar, laughing one minute and being absolutely angry about seemingly nothing the next. He was persistent and pleaded that he would do better, and he absolutely did up until two weeks ago. So we were all hanging out in the kitchen, kids included. I let my son hang out later than bedtime because we were having a good time, playing board games. My husband was okay with this until he wasn't. I guess that's the best way to put it. Everything was fine, and then he snapped. I'd gotten up to get a drink of water, and my husband said, All right, enough, it's past your bedtime. My son goes, Oh, come on, just a little bit later, and my husband snaps. He starts raising his voice, basically screaming about how no one respects him. My son immediately retreated to his room. I'm silent. I start washing the dishes and avoiding eye contact. He goes, great, now you're damn angry at me too. This admittedly made me lash out. Maybe because I'm fed up, I don't know. I yelled at him, told him that maybe if he respected us or gave us something to respect, then this wouldn't be an issue. He then says, what the heck is there for me to respect? And then slams out of the house and leaves. It's like 11pm at this point. I text him and tell him not to come home. He doesn't. He slept in his vehicle and went to work the next morning like nothing happened. I packed up the kids and me while he was at work. I obviously left a lot behind, so I left a note on the table saying, I'll be back for the rest of our stuff when I'm able. I then went to the courthouse and got the divorce papers. I had to get an attorney to understand how to fill them out, so it took me a little over a week, but once I had it all completed, I brought him the paperwork for him to sign. He'd been texting me and calling the entire time I was gone, begging us to come home. He said he was sorry and obviously respects us, but he's just really stressed out and didn't understand why you'd let James stay up so late, knowing I had work the next day. He kept saying that the kids and I were the only reason he hadn't lost himself completely. Says he'll get therapy, etc. But I just don't trust him anymore. So when I went there and handed him the divorce papers, he was essentially blindsided because he thought we would be able to work this out. He's refusing to sign the papers right now, which I'm not super concerned about, but almost everyone I know is against me on this because he apologized and he obviously didn't mean it. He was just stressed and think that I should just work it out with him because he was absolutely perfect up until I gave birth and the stress of finances started weighing on him. He has never been good in high stress environments, but it's been six months straight and I can't do it anymore. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. I'm just stressed. Yeah, well, that happens to everyone and it's not a free excuse to abuse your family. It's obvious you've tried to help and tried to encourage him to do something for himself. Good for you for doing what's best for your children. They don't deserve to live like that. I'm sure it hurts, but he's just saying whatever he thinks will make you come home. Exactly. Having two parents in the house isn't more important than modeling healthy behavior and relationships. The son, baby daughter and OP will be constantly tense, waiting for the next explosion to erupt walking on eggshells because every little thing sets off the husband for no reason. Best to make a clean break. The husband changed in the weirdest way, and it's not going to get better anytime soon. Heard this great saying, Respect can mean different things. It can mean treat someone with basic dignity, or it can mean treat someone as superior. So when someone says, If you don't respect me, I won't respect you, they're saying, if you don't treat me as a superior, I won't treat you with basic dignity. I have two daughters, Lexi Teen and Kelly Teen. Everyone in our family adores Lexi. She's beautiful, smart and talented, but most importantly, she puts a lot of effort into her relationships with people. If her aunt or one of her uncles has an emergency, she's there to babysit their kids for free. If they're sick, she's cooking a meal and bringing it to them. Because of this, my family usually spoils her for every occasion. 
They love Kelly too, but they're not as close to her. A few months ago for Kelly's birthday, her aunt and uncle gave her a bag, a shirt and a skateboard, all of which she's interested in. I also gave her an iPad. Lexi's birthday is in a few weeks and my siblings have all called to tell me what they're planning to buy for her and ask if it's okay. They're buying a PS5, a Sephora makeup kit and a necklace. Well, today, Kelly asked me what I was planning to buy for Lexi, and I told her it was the same iPad I'd bought for her. She started yelling at me that this wasn't fair. Lexi is already getting a lot of expensive gifts, and it's only fair if I give her a cheap gift. I told her there was no way I was going to show favoritism here. Her sister is getting an iPad too, and that is the end of our discussion. She called me an idiot and a jerk, and I told her if she said one more word, she would no longer have an iPad. Now she won't talk to me at all. Am I the idiot for refusing to show favoritism? I have two daughters. Lexi is beautiful and smart and talented. What about Kelly's trades? You mention her as some sort of footnote in your post. You're already showing so much favoritism in the first two sentences and it's quite sickening. Yes, lady, you are the idiot and a massive one. One is beautiful, smart and talented. The other one is named Kelly and I yell at her when she calls me out for my favoritism. OP, repeat this back to yourself three times in the morning and three times at night, every day until it finally drills into the desiccated poo you have in place of your brain's empathy center. The beautiful part especially stood out to me. Like, why even mention that? So what, you think one of your daughters is ugly and therefore less deserving of presents? What the heck? Worst, your own child tried to talk to you about how upset she was and you punished her for sharing her feelings. Parent of the year for sure. Gross, you are the idiot. Try to remember your least favorite daughter not being enough of a socialite to deserve the love of your relatives is your fault. You raised her to be the person she is and you're claiming she's entitled.